my name is Brooke and this is Baker's Workshop. Today I'm making a giant butterfly. This is going to have some woodworking, there's going to be some resin, there's going to be some 3D printing. Let's get started. I'm using Wenge for this project and I began by prepping it to be resawed on the bandsaw into two thin panels. I then added a rabbet to the edges of each panel. This will give me more surface area to glue in the glue up and therefore a stronger joint between two otherwise very thin pieces. I took my time here and was really careful to be precise because it's such a thin panel to start with. Any unevenness would need to be sanded down and only further thin the wood. I loaded my two panels up onto parallel bar clamps for the glue up and then applied wood glue to the seam, being careful to get every angle of the rabbit. I squeezed the panels together and added two clamps to either side of the glue up to keep the piece from bowing upwards from the pressure. I wiped off the excess glue with a wet cloth and then 12 hours later, put the piece through the drum sander for one last sand. It was then time to prep the file that would cut this into butterfly wings in Adobe Illustrator. I used a coloring page as my starting point here. Coloring pages are great for this type of thing because they're high contrast, black and white, and therefore really easy to work with. For the best test cuts, I create a small file to minimize waste, but with a similar level of detail to the larger file. With the right speed and power settings, a laser cutter should get through material like butter, but without any excess charring. When I thought I had it down, I set the laser to cut the wings. Oh no! The better of the two wings looked great and only needed a quick, tiny repair with some glue. Now, this other one. I'm not gonna give up. I feel like I can salvage this with the scroll saw and a whole lot of patience. I started at the bandsaw, not the scroll saw, to remove the bulk of the excess wood on the wing that didn't cut all the way through in the laser. I need to have a little heart to heart about the butterfly wing. It doesn't look bad, it just doesn't really pair with one that was done on the laser cutter. It's also a brandy new laser um, to me that was built and calibrated in house. And if you've never had any experience doing that, it's actually pretty tricky to calibrate a laser, especially one with a really large bed like that because it needs to cut the same up here as it does over here, as it does over here and so on. I could have completely avoided the issue had I just done it as two smaller cuts rather than one big cut um, or just taken a little bit more time test cutting it, oh, whatever. I, I, I know better than this, but it's okay. In an exciting twist of fate, I have more wood. So we're gonna do that all again. It was now time to think resin. I started with a batch of test pours using a range of alcohol inks. This made it easy to select the right colors for the butterfly. I also realized that the finished wings would end up very transparent with just the alcohol inks, so I found pigments to add in to make the color slightly more opaque. With my colors ready to go, I started to fill in the wings. Paper Dixie cups are awesome here because they fold to get into small spaces. What ended up working best was to pour one color at a time and let it completely harden before going in with the next color. This kept it easier to clean up if anything leaked or spilled, instead of needing to deal with colors marbling together on me. 
painter's tape also made a great barrier to help avoid the marbling effect. <laughs> This method worked really well, but inevitably did take quite a bit of time and patience because I had two whole wings to fill. For some of the wing sections, I wanted to fade between yellow and orange. To do this, I split a batch of resin into two cups and colored one orange and one yellow. I alternated pouring each color and then agitated the seam between colors with a stirring stick to blend them. My name's Michael. Brooke's been taking forever to make this butterfly, so I thought that maybe I could make one faster. Let's get started. Look at that, I'm done. Came with instructions. I won't be needing these. Read me. Um. 24 to 40 hours to adjust after their bumpy journey to you. They will soon begin eating and growing before our very eyes. All right, so it looks like we're just kind of ready to go. Ah! <laughs> Once the resin was finally all poured and hardened, I ran all the wings through the drum sander a few times to remove the bulk of the excess resin. I was then feeling ready to move on to starting the 3D model for the butterfly body. I wanted to install LED strip lights in the back of the body so the butterfly would light up. So after making a basic bug shape, I added cavities to snugly fit the needed electrical components, as well as small holes to add wire legs and antenna later on. A couple of little tweaks are in order for this original 3D model here. Um, first things first, everything's gonna get scaled up ever so slightly. There's a whole lot going on and not that much space here. So I think that that'll be a good call. Uh, that's number one. Number two um, is that I actually think I'm gonna use a rechargeable nine volt battery for this bug because then it can be plugged in or just switched on and off without a power cord coming out of it. I don't know, I just, I just think it'll be better. Um, but this just, it doesn't fit. Obviously that's going to need to be uh, made larger and just made to fit this. Thing number three, um, in the spirit of making better use of what space I do have here, I'm going to move the position of the on off switch. I think it'll be easier for me to wire and just also actually an easier spot to click on and off when it's done too. Um, and then lastly, these light holes, I made them really, really deep for some reason. I don't know what I was thinking. So those need to come up a little bit more, come out to the light of day. Um, Easy change. Oh, and then I'm also going to add a hole between the two lights because I think that when I actually get down to wiring this thing, there's gonna be a lot of wires and I wanna give myself another option um, to slightly change the circuit if I need to. So it's gonna be like an insurance hole, so to speak. Can't decide if I made it too big. No, we'll see. We'll see. Hey, uh. No, I don't think it's too big. Is it too big? I'm noticing a couple of major design flaws with this one that I definitely think need to be handled. The hole that goes from the LED to the battery, it's too small and so it caved in on itself during the 3D print. That's gonna need to be fixed. Third time's the charm, right? Though, like, it's fine. We've got this. The most time consuming part of the 3D model was actually adding all the holes for the tiny wire legs. So I wanted to try out an alternative method for that. I heated up copper wire with a torch and gently pressed it into one of my 3D prints to see if it would stay in place securely. It did, so I nixed those leg holes for the final print. I double checked that everything fit properly into the 3D print and then prepped my electrical components. I'm saving the female connector at the end of the strip lights and setting it aside to become the charging cord for the battery. LED strip lights are often covered in a thick plasticky coating. 
I found razor blades to be the easiest way to cleanly expose the positive and negative terminals for soldering to. I then prepped all of my wires so that they'd just be ready to go. So we have our two LED strip lights right there. We've got a switch on the side and we have our battery and then we also have uh, where we can charge this. We need to wire the positives to the switch from the lights and then also wire the switch to the positive side of the battery. And then we need to do the same thing with the negatives only this time we don't need to worry about looping the battery in there, sorry, looping the switch in there. And then this will work, this will make this circuit work. So on off, we have our lights going. But then we also have this charging port here. So we need to just loop this into the uh, negative side. And then this just needs to get looped into the positive side. At this point, it's just a matter of soldering it all together. While not the most elegant method, I'm just using hot glue to insulate any exposed metal here. Technically, you should use like shrink tubing or electrical tape for something like this, but like this is a pretty low voltage thing, so the glue should be just fine. It won't melt. I'm not worried about it. It worked. There was an adhesive backing on these strip lights, but I didn't trust it, so I used a five minute epoxy to secure the strip lights to their spot. Meanwhile, it turns out Michael is a natural at playing Mother Nature and had a whole batch of butterflies ready to release within two weeks of starting. Feeling inspired or something like that, I set to finishing the wings. I sanded them up to a 220 grit using a random orbital sander for a nice matte finish. I used paint thinner to wipe off any excess dust and then went in with a satin wipe on poly. I wanted the wings to be luminous but definitely not glossy. I wasn't planning on doing any further finishing on the 3D printed body, but the supports came off really rough, so I sanded them down to prep for a uniform layer of primer and spray paint because it seemed unavoidable. I really, really should have spray painted before doing the wiring, but oops, it happens. So I covered the back parts with painter's tape and then added in my legs and antenna so those would be spray painted black as well. I started off with two coats of black filler primer. This is a key step always when finishing 3D prints as it fills in the print layers really well. The next day, I topped things off with a satin finish black spray paint. Seemed like it'd be the most bug-like. I intentionally designed the tabs on the wings to be trimmed down. So I started trimming them until I had the perfect fit into the body.
And then I secured the wings in place using five minute epoxy. I melted a hanger onto the back of the butterfly by heating the hardware with a soldering iron and then applying pressure into the 3D print. It looked amazing in the daylight and the only thing left to do was to hang it up and check it out in the dark. Here it is, it's finally done. I don't know if you can tell in the video, but I actually started this months ago and just have been working on it in really small chunks of time since April. It's November now. Uh, so it feels really good to like finally have this one done and ready to be hung. If you enjoyed this project, don't forget to click the subscribe button to follow along with everything that we make here at Maker's Workshop.